Hi there! I'm Nadira Jamal, the Belly Dance Geek, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to shorten a song. There are many reasons why you may need to cut a song down. Maybe you need a shorter version. Let's say your song is five minutes long and you need a three minute version. Or maybe you need to separate out a section of the track. For example, on many CDs, if there's a full length routine, it will often be given as a single track instead of having each section be a separate track. This can be really annoying if, say, you want to pull out the drum solo, but you can't use it separately from that 20 minute routine. Or sometimes a song will begin with a toxim, and maybe you want to be able to cut that out so either you can use the toxim separately or you can use the rest of the song without using the toxim. Either way, these same techniques will apply. So I'm going to show you two techniques in this video. One is how to shorten a song by cutting off the end or the beginning. And the other is shortening a song by cutting a piece out of the middle. For these tutorials, you'll need Audacity. This is free open source software, which is available for Macs, PCs, and even other platforms. You can get that for free at audacity.sourceforge.net. So let's jump right into those tutorials. Once you've launched Audacity, the first thing that you need to do is to open up your audio file. So let's go into the file menu and choose open. Then you'll select your audio file and click on the open button. This will open up your audio file in Audacity and show you the audio waveform. Now at this point, we're still working in the original audio file. And that's a bad idea because any changes that you make could overwrite the original version. So let's save that as a separate Audacity project first. We'll go back into the file menu and choose Save Project As. Click on OK. And let's give it a name. I'm going to call this Short Drum Loop. And click Save. And now the title of the window changes, and that's how we know that any changes that we make will not put our original file at risk. So let's look at how to shorten a clip by cutting off the ending. Here in the Audacity window, we can see the audio waveform. This gives you some clues about what's in the music. For example, this is a short drum loop that has doom tech, doom doom tech. Sometimes it's easier to listen to the program, so what you can do is click on the play button, which is this green arrow. And I can press the stop button to stop. Now let's say that I want two repetitions of this rhythm. I want doom tech, doom doom tech, doom tech, doom doom tech. The first thing that I need to do is to figure out which area of this waveform I want to keep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the play button and listen until it's close to the stopping point and I'm going to watch where that cursor goes. So I could see that that second rhythm ended about here. I'm going to select an area beginning after the point that I know I want to include and dragging all the way to the end. Then I'm going to delete that section by clicking on the cut button, which is this one here that looks like a small pair of scissors. So now let's listen to what we have. I'm going to press Command A, or on a PC I believe that would be Control A, to select the whole thing, and then I'm going to click on play. So that last doom is this big peak here. And that's something that I did not want in my original. Now depending on how you want to cut your music, you may want to remove that entirely by clicking on, by selecting it and clicking on the cut button, which would give us or you can leave that in there and fade out through the extra portion. So let's undo our cut and now what we're going to do is we're going to fade out that ending. 
To fade, you'll need to switch to the envelope tool, which is this one here with the blue line in the upper left. This gives you a blue line at the beginning and at the bottom of each clip. To set a fade point, you first need to click on the blue line at the point where you want it to start fading out, and then another one, and drag that in, and you'll notice that it's collapsing this waveform. You want it to fade all the way out until it's a tiny, tight little point. Then let's select all again and play. So we can still hear that doom, but it's very clearly faded out. Now you can adjust the overall volume by dragging your out point, and you can adjust how long that fade out takes by dragging that same point from right to left. So you can see that this curve is taking a lot longer to stretch out. Let's hear that again. So that creates a fade ending. When you're happy with where you've cut and whether or not you like your fade, you can then export this to a WAV format, which is something that can be read by iTunes or other audio programs. So you'll go into the file menu, choose export as WAV, and then save that file. When that's done, you can go back into that folder and you can listen to that by opening it in a program like iTunes or QuickTime or any other. So I'm going to choose to open this in, v in VLC, which is my favorite media player. And I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So now this file is available and ready to use. If you'd prefer to use the ending of a song, you can follow these exact same instructions, only instead of cutting off the end of the song and fading at the end, you could cut off the beginning and fade in. Now the fade-in process is exactly the same. You just select your ending point and your beginning of the fade point, and you just do a, the mirror image. So if we listen to this fade in and then fade out, it sounds like... Now let's look at how to shorten a song by cutting out the middle. This is my favorite way to shorten a song because it leaves the original beginning and ending intact. Now, not every song can be shortened this way. This only works if the song has certain parts that repeat and are nearly identical. So it works very well for songs that have a verse chorus toxeme structure or for songs that have repeating sections. So let's look at how to do that. I've already opened up my song and saved it as an Audacity project file. So what we need to do is we need to identify two points in the song that are nearly identical, or ideally completely identical. Now just by looking at the waveform, I can see two points that look very similar. There's this little bottleneck right here, a little bit after 30 seconds, and another bottleneck here, a little bit after 145 seconds. So that's going to be my first place to check. I'm going to click my cursor a few seconds before the bottleneck, and I'm going to listen to just that section. And now let's listen to the other one. I'm going to click just a few seconds before the bottleneck. So that's pretty promising. We have some loud music, a very brief pause, a woman's voice, and then some drums come in. So there's a good chance that if I splice out everything from where she begins singing at 30 seconds to where she begins singing at 147-ish seconds, that it's going to create a seamless transition. But we have to be very specific about where we do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to zoom in right here at the 30 second mark. And what I need to do is I need to find out where that pause happens. So I'm going to select a segment so I can play just that portion. So that pause is actually happening at just about here. 
I'm going to select that chunk again to make sure I've got it right and play it. And actually her voice begins about halfway through that selection. So if I choose just that chunk, I'm hoping I don't hear her voice at all. And I was wrong, I did get a little bit. So I'm going to grab just this chunk and hear it. So it looks like this little downward pointing peak is where her voice begins. Let's grab that chunk and listen and see if that's accurate. Yes. So the ending of the beginning portion that I want to keep is going to happen just before that peak. So I'm going to use the left arrow on my keyboard to select to just before that peak. Now I want to mark the fact that this is where my cut is going to happen. So if I go into the project menu, I can choose add label at selection. And I'm going to call this start cut. So that just creates a little note to self there that lets me know that that's where I want to begin cutting out. So I'm going to start omitting here. The next thing that I need to do is to zoom all the way back over to that second point which you'll recall was at about 145, excuse me, 1 minute and 45 seconds. And this looks like it might be it, so I'm going to select a larger chunk and play it. Alright, and so that looks good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And now we have this downward pointing peak again, so I think that that's where I'm going to want to come back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the chunk just before that, and play it and see if it does in fact not include her voice. And I was wrong. So let's listen from here over. So it sounds like her voice starts somewhere on the right side of that selection. Let's grab a smaller chunk and listen. So it sounds like this little piece is her voice. Let's press play. Yes, so that's the first syllable. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. So this is the new downward peak. You can hear we're just hearing the beginning of G. So just before this is where we need to add our, is where we need to end cutting. So I'm going to add another label at selection. Let's call that end cut. And I'm just going to click right there and use the right mouse button to line it up with that arrow. Then I'm going to scroll all the way back to my other label, and I'm going to hold down the shift key and click. And what that will do is it will select everything between where I began and where I ended. I can show you what that looks like by zooming out, and you can see that that whole area is grayed out. So I'm going to use the cut button to remove that chunk. And now let's listen and see if my cut worked well. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this section. And let's grab that chunk and play it. That sounds okay to me, but it, we might have gotten the rhythm just a little bit off. So I'm going to grab a larger chunk so we can hear the happening before that. And let's play now. right, but it almost sounds to me like there's an extra beat. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more, grab a little bit more, and let's play that again. So it sounds to me like we did get an extra beat in there. So I'm going to zoom in slide over to where that cut point was, and I'm going to select the chunk where I think we hear her voice. And I'm going to try removing a little bit that looks like about one beat. Now I'm guessing that it's a beat because it has one tiny little peak here. So let's cut it out, zoom out a little bit, and listen to a few seconds. Closer, but it still sounds like there's a tiny little bit extra. So I'm going to zoom in. Maybe that was
that a little too far in. And I think that this is the beginning of her voice. Let's play that. So maybe we want to get rid of this little chunk, which is one beat. Let's cut that little chunk out. And now I think it's a beat because it's got that curve. Let's cut it out. Zoom out a little bit. Listen to a few seconds. Now, how much you cut and exactly where is a matter of trial and error. So there's a certain amount of finesse that goes into this. So the first few times that you do this, it's likely to take you a really long time and you might end up getting really frustrated and maybe even swearing at me for suggesting this in the first place. But once you get some practice, it will start to be something that you can do in just a few minutes. Now, one thing that's important to know is that if you do think that you've taken it just a little bit too far and cut out too much, you can go to the end edit menu and choose undo cut. And that will undo your latest little tiny chunk that you cut out. So let's hear what we get this time. And I think maybe that was slightly better. I think maybe I overshot a little bit the second time. So once you've gotten it to just the right point, you can export the file by going to File, Export as WAV, and choosing Save. And now you have an ordinary WAV file, which you can play in iTunes, burn to a CD, or do anything else that you'd like. So I'm going to open that up in VLC. So you can hear that that splice is pretty seamless. You have to be listening pretty closely to tell that it was cut there. And if you're not familiar with the song, you might not even be able to tell. The music used in this tutorial is by an artist named Drawn, and I licensed it through a company called Pond5. You can find their stuff at pond5.com. And thanks for joining me. For more geektacular resources, visit bellydancegeek.com.